Hello all, and welcome to tonight's beer review. It's almost 9.30, so getting pretty late. Uh, I'm going to dub this one the uh, Yeah, I don't know what to do and dub this one. I was going to dub it after something I did at work, but it's like way too depressing. I mean, I should never even talk about work on this channel because you shouldn't talk about things that you only have negative things to say about. You should only talk about things that are positive things. And what are things that are positive? Beer. So I had a positive surprise with this beer. So yeah, I'm going to dub this one the positive beer review because I'm going to try to be more positive from now on. So, y'all know this, if you have any know anything about beer, this is Foster's Premium, and I have never drank this before. I've drank Foster's Lager before, you know, before I got into, like, serious beer, and, you know, it, it would just be, like, something I drank to, for the alcohol alone, uh, because it was available, and it came in these really interesting oil cans, you know. But I never had premium, which is a green can. Lager is a blue can. And I was at Times, and I saw this on the shelf, and it struck me how unbelievably cheap it was, by Hawaii standards, of course. So it was about $2.70 for the oil can, which is a very good price for Hawaii, like, Basically, a tall boy of Budweiser costs around either in between $3.30 to $3.50. So this is about, you know, a dollar less than that. Well, not a full dollar less than that. And basically, a kind of rot gut stuff that I will probably never review unless I'm getting very desperate, like Steel Reserve malt liquor. Even that in tall boy. You know, 24 ounce, 25 ounce tall boy, kind of come is usually around 225 to 250. So this was astoundingly cheap, and looking it up, I found out it is not a logger. It is actually a ESB, um, basically an extra strong bitter. So in English style ale. So um, let's read the verbiage, shall we? Over 125 years ago, during the summer of 1888, the Foster brothers gave the thirsty people of Melbourne their first taste of true refreshment. So this is 5.5 ABV, and you know, the commercial tagline is, Foster's Australian for beer. And um, I regret to inform you that from what I hear from Australians and what I've read online, Foster's is primarily an export lager at this point. And within Australia, it's kind of divided. Um, the primary beer depends on geographic location. It's either XXX, X lager, or, um, or I don't know what they call it, Quad X. It's like the four X's, what have you. Um, or Victoria Bitters, which is, even though it's called Victoria Bitter, is actually... A lager is their primary um, selling beer. And I, I've never seen either of them. Um, I believe they do export, but they don't export to Hawaii. Foster's is Australia's export beer, not really drunk all that much within the country. That said, it was very surprising when I drank this, and I've already yammered on and stared at the camera in uncomfortable silence long enough. So let's just go and pour this one out and enjoy. So, yeah, it's it's nice having a beer that is not a macro lager or not an IPA. Thing is about these oil cans though is that they pour kind of drippy at times. So <clears throat> as you can see, sort of an amber color, light amber color, maybe sort of orange yellow, very clear, not strongly carbonated, with a fluffy off-white head. <clears throat> Mm. 
The smell is of bready malts. And to a certain extent, grassy and herbaceous hopping. Either way, it doesn't smell like an adjunct lager. Now, I'm pretty sure, due to the price of this, that adjuncts are used in brewing this, but it is definitely an ale and not a lager. <clears throat> okay, since my voice is getting cracky and feeling kind of parched, let me just go and um, get to sipping this, shall we? Hmm. Now that hit the spot, friends. Now by no means would I call this like, you know, a very complex, very, you know, it, it, it's not a beer for like savoring. It, it's a beer for just drinking. Up front, you have hot bitterness, but it hits different than the sort of, you know, sort of macro adjunct lager hot bitterness, followed by um, a nice breadiness, a light brown breadness. Roasted note, more roasted notes emerge in the mids. And you're kind of left with some also nice, um, subtle, slight fruity estery notes in the mid to finish. They're very subtle and very slight. <clears throat> and in the long finish, you just have some mild bitterness mixed with that sort of toasted bread taste in the long finish. Top note is not much different than the nose. Maybe just a bit more malt showing up there. <clears throat> and there are also there are some slight, you know, tasting flaws. There is a slight metallic taste to it. But all in all, it's not apparent compared to like some other beers I've had. It's very quaffable. As you can see, as in how I'm drinking it right now. And it feels almost exactly at the 5.5 ABV. So it warms up a bit. There's a bit more bitterness that's apparent in the long finish, you know. Nothing really out there. There's just, you know, a bit more than usual. So the finish is not clean, but it shouldn't be clean. Excuse me. And all in all, I'm just struck by this because it's, it kind of hits me the same way that Negra Modelo does. You know, it's a cheap beer that you can find in many, many places. But due to the fact that it is not a macro lager, 
you know, um, it sort of piques the interests just by being different. And <clears throat> or should I, I guess I should say adjunct logger uh, bit, has a bit more of correct descriptive there. But um, yeah, you know, so at the price point, this is a pretty good beer, you know. Like I said, it's it's not going to stand up to a craft beer or you know a traditional extra you know you know extra strong bitter from a long-standing you know English pub brewery or something like that. It's uh it it's but on the standards of like stuff that's cheap at the supermarket, yeah, man, I could see myself going for this again and again. Now the ratings for this online are pretty bad. But like a lot of um, you know the reviews, I, I generally use reviews as sort of a rule of thumb. I don't actually take them all that seriously or all that deeply into my consideration of the beers. But I can kind of see why it, why it's getting a lot of hate. It, I mean, you can't get much more plebeian than this kind of beer. <clears throat> that said, I kind of wish that there were as many sort of mass market ales, as it were, as there are you know, lagers. And I don't even really care if adjuncts are used in brewing them or, you know, various other, like, macro techniques for brewing large batches. I would just like to go and see a little bit more variety. You know, especially as the craft world seems to be um, struggling with contraction, at least within the United States. It's from other countries. You know, um, craft beer videos I review from other countries, it seems like it's still a growing share of the market. It's contracting in the States right now, and um, a lot of uh, smaller breweries are closing up, you know. <clears throat> and that means that there is a sort of focus on beer styles that sell, and that's basically IPA, hazy IPAs, and to a lesser extent, um, barrel-aged stouts and, you know, heavy ales and whatnot. But, you know, this is not a craft beer, it's a macro beer, but, mm, you know, this, this, I can't emphasize it, it's really, I was quite surprised by how much I enjoyed it, um, you know, and it's not the case that, um, I'll find just because it's a macro beer that is not a lager, you know, that I'll like it, I mean, I'm not too big into Boddington's. I'm not too big into um, Newcastle. You know, I, I don't hate them. But, yeah, I, I enjoy... I, I like the taste of this better than Newcastle. I'm going to be quite blunt, you know. And the main reason for that is the taste flaw in Newcastle stands out much, much more than the taste flaw in this one does. So yeah, I kind of rambled on for 15 minutes about cheap beer, but sometimes that's what you want is a cheap beer, and this is a good cheap beer. Foster's Premium, Australian for grinding, working poverty. That's me! Oh, I have some people who watch this who are just going to absolutely slaughter me for, like, mimicking their accent. But that's okay. I'm going to give you a complete carte blanche to go and mimic, like, you know, a Hawaiian pigeon accent all you want. You have, you have my, you have my pee pass. You have the pee pass for me, the pigeon pass. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's your beer review for tonight, folks.
Cheers.